three of painting your wheels professional products professional results today we're going to be spraying paint so I'll be showing you techniques uh, for spraying the paint and just get a close look at how I'm using the trigger of my gun the, every time you hear the air it's not always uh, paint coming out uh, when painting wheels like this you have to be really careful that you don't get too much paint on them because they're very very likely to run because of all the different surfaces that come together uh, I want everybody else or I want everybody out there to be sure to take a look at the rules in their local jurisdictions we're governed by EPA 6H rule here which means I can paint two full cars in my garage I can also use solvent based paint uh, some jurisdictions only allow water based paint some don't allow you to paint at all some require you to paint in a booth. So just be familiar with your rules and uh, don't break them. <laughs> so anyway, let's get to the painting and I hope you enjoy what you see. Let's talk a little bit about my paint setup here. The wheels are going to be able to spin uh, on this little chair here. And I've got my chair, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna put this low and uh, spray these so that I can just kinda twirl them around. I'm going to spray all the way down to uh, this lip but from the top so that I can actually pull these off and set them on this bottom without uh, worrying about damaging anything. So we're going to paint them. We're going to set them off onto here. I've got them lined up one after another. So I've got enough room to put all five wheels there on the cardboard. Um, I've got a fan here that's going to pull some air out. I've got a little intake over there. We're going to paint maybe not right in front of the fan but we're going to paint pretty close we gave that a really good stir and a really good shake uh, probably spent about five ten minutes doing that uh, I got all the gook off the bottom scraped all the sides like that and uh, once I got it all off the bottom and the sides then I put the cap back on and shook the uh, crap out of it and uh, you can see I've got a piece of tape here with some folded up edges. Uh, that's my little tape bridge. That's going to keep our can nice and clean so you won't have to worry about paint down in the rim and all that stuff and also you won't have to worry about drips on the label. So I'll be able to read this can. It'll look like it's unused even though it'll be uh, maybe half empty after today. Uh, again, this has already been reduced so um, we're just going to throw it in the cup. We're not really worried about the measurements. We're just going to let it rip. Again, paper towels. Keep them close. You don't want this paint getting on something that it doesn't need to be on. I'm going to close this up so we don't get any stuff in there that we don't want. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this into the gun here. I've got a starting line. Deville this starting line. These are cheap. Like 129 bucks. Uh, for the gun, and this one came with a little uh, touch-up gun. If I were doing it again, I'd buy the two full-size guns, so you have a primer gun and a paint gun. We've got a 1.3 tip today on the gun, and uh, that should be enough paint to get us going for sure. I always keep a uh, little cut off piece of guitar string. I don't even know if you guys can see that. It's real thin. Uh, just to make sure that this is cleared out. I always just stick it in there real quick. Make sure everything can breathe right. This is another tool that you want on your bench while you are painting. Technical reference uh, manual. This one is the official one from Matrix and we can flip right to MPB which is under uh, base coat systems and it tells us our flash times, it tells us uh, what reducers you can use, it tells you everything you need to know what surfaces it can go over and all that kind of stuff and uh, so we'll flip, hopefully I can't do this very well with my gloves on it'll tell us a 1.3 tip which we have, 2 to 3 medium wet coats 10 to 15 minutes between coats and then 30 minutes uh, before clear coat at 77 degrees. So we're going to probably have to leave this about an hour today. Um, and 
if you don't have matrix or you don't have a full catalog, you can print out your sheets from the internet. So I have a bunch of PPG stuff because I've shot some PPG. So this is the Deltron. Uh, same thing, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. Always have these sheets available because it never fails when you're painting. Uh, you forget, and you can go look it up online, it's all there, but it's so much handier to just have it all printed out, and uh, I keep mine right over there, uh, out of harm's way. I've let these flash off here for about 45 minutes and what I'm going to do, I was going to clear coat these from this side and then let them all dry. I think what I'm going to do, since I've already got the base coat ready to go, uh, they're dry, they're dry to the touch, uh, they're not sticky or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to flip them over and we're going to do the base coat. We're going to do two coats of base on the face of them and uh, then I'm going to clear coat the faces of them, let them dry out maybe overnight, and then we'll flip them over and do the back sides. Now we are going to put on uh, probably two, we'll, we'll address it after two coats, two light coats. Uh, the last thing I want to do, it's real easy to run uh, something with all these different angles and stuff, so it's going to be two very light coats, so you're going to see me spraying a lot of air and a little paint. Uh, so that's how we're going to approach it here.
getting ready to move on to clear coat. So we're taking a look at the clear coat um, Bible here, our matrix Bible. And this is compatible with all of the matrix uh, line, which is premium base, and the S base, which I'm not sure what that S stands for, standard probably, uh, and then the other matrix. And then it's also DBC and DBU, which are both uh, PPG as well as Omni, which is another PPG. I believe DAU is also a PPG, but I'm not certain. I'm not familiar with that. Chroma Base, Nason, those are uh, DuPont products, and then Glazurit, Limco, Auto Base, and Ultra 7000. Again, I'm not terribly familiar. I know uh, Glazurit and Limco. I don't know the other two, but uh, this is a very compatible uh, clear coat. And again, it is. Uh, if you look in the book, it says Ultra Gloss, and that's what this is. So it's more of a European style clear than it is an American OEM. And whenever I'm opening these types of cans up, the clear coat itself probably isn't that big of a deal. And by the way, all of this is urethane, the base coat and uh, the clear coat. Whenever I'm opening this stuff up, whenever I get into the hardeners, uh, I always have my respirator on. Uh, the hardeners are what contain all the isocyanurates. Isocyanates, I'm sorry. And uh, I don't like to breathe those things in. They're very dangerous. And uh, from what I understand from the people much smarter than I is the effect of the isos uh, can be can be uh, cumulative so the more you breathe in over time uh, the worse off you get it's not just a one-time exposure and your body gets rid of it so I'm gonna mask up here and this is a two to one Now I'm going to let this mead for maybe five minutes together. We'll put it in the gun and start shooting. And here's our instructions. So two to three full wet coats, uh, six to ten PSI for an HVLP uh, at the air cap. So we'll set the uh, regulator about 22 to 26 and then 10 to 15 minute flash time. Coat number two. There you have it been drying for about uh, 45 minutes so they're good and tacked up two coats of clear on there I'll be painting the back sides uh, either very late tonight or tomorrow after the clear has had a chance to harden up but uh, that's the appearance of the clear I'll show you here uh, when it's fully dried tomorrow so there it is the finished product you guys got a good look at that right before we started part one. Uh, they came out fantastic. I wound up doing the backside clear coat last night at about midnight. So I let the front side cure from somewhere around, uh, let's see, somewhere around three o'clock in the afternoon, maybe four o'clock in the afternoon. So I let it cure out about eight hours before I painted the backside. So it came out very nice for a set of uh, cheap Volkswagen wheels uh, that are going on a little Volkswagen back there. 
I'm glad you could join me for our three-part series on how to paint your wheels, professional products, professional results. I hope everybody enjoyed what they